Okay, so we're, we're starting? Yes. All right, great. Welcome to The Digital Mind. We are a new podcast through the Baylor Ethics Initiative, and we are going to be talking to students and faculty about all of the different ways that technology, such as social media, open AI, plays roles in their life. I'm Sarah Walden. I'm a professor of rhetoric at Baylor University, and I study social media. So I'm particularly interested in the ways that students integrate technology into their daily lives and into their classroom education. I'm Ezra Cho. I'm the theology and philosophy librarian. I'm interested in virtue ethics and how we could flourish in a digital world. Great. So I'm Rob Reed, and I teach ethics here in the Baylor Philosophy Department. And I spent a few years working in artificial intelligence. I'm really interested in the intersection of ethics and digital matters, AI, big data, algorithms, and the various ways that these new technologies change our lives. All right, so Rob and Ezra, you are the co-conveners for the data ethics portion of the Ethics Initiative. Tell us why this podcast is important to have right now. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. I think the main reason that this podcast is relevant right now is that we're getting a lot of hype about ChatGPT, and ChatGPT is tremendously powerful, and there are a lot of ways that it can change, especially how students and professors interact. Uh, as I think you well know, mm -hmm. as a professor of composition, uh, there, it's very easy uh, for students with the sort of assignments that professors already assign to just go into ChatGPT and cook up an essay. Yep. And we want to be able to discuss, you know, one, how does the technology work? Probably a lot of people are curious just how it works. Also, we might want to give students the ability to think about this, whether or not it's worth it, what are the costs, benefits, what are the trade-offs. And I think, you know, in your case, uh, you might have a lot to offer faculty to think about chat GPT, maybe, if I'm understanding, not so much as a threat, but as an opportunity to reform bad practices. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's, there's so many things that we can do to be creative and innovative in the classroom, but there's also so many ways that faculty and students can use chat GPT or any kind of open AI tool to start creativity or spark creativity in the classroom. So I think one of the things that we want to accomplish with this is to think about you know, how we use this as a tool that exists rather than ways to avoid it, right? So there certainly are variations on assignments that we can think about, but we can also think about, you know, how does this tool help us to get past that fear of the blank screen that you stare at and you can't think of anything? Is there some way we can use this as a way to get started rather than as an end in the process? Ezra, what are some of the other reasons that you were thinking about this podcast as being important, particularly in terms of virtue ethics? I'm generally interested in the wider implications of AI. And I think as educators and instructors, as people, we're working in an educational setting. We all want students to flourish and to live well. And I think uh, AI poses questions where, and concerns for and challenges for students when it comes to things such as how we could interact with ChatGPT and other AI. I think uh, AI poses uh, challenges for students as they navigate the digital space. So I think we need to have a forum space where we could talk about specific issues in AI and data ethics so that we could help students flourish in their uh, endeavors. So I, I broadly take virtue ethics framework. I think it's a good ethical framework. And obviously, I, I also want to explore whether whether there's certain limits to the particular framework. And I'm also open to, obviously, other ethical frameworks that would help us navigate through this digital space. Great. So would you say, then, that the podcast is largely inspired by ChatGPT, but is not limited to ChatGPT ter in terms of what we cover? Oh, definitely not. I think our podcasts want to explore all areas of AI, not just ChatGPT. Chat GPT, although Chat GPT obviously is very, it's a very hot topic in, right. in our and in the academic space. But you know, uh, AI has been is used in organizations and institutions, uh, banking, uh, your uh, Facebook or we'll cut Facebook out. No, TikTok. It is used in Facebook. It is used mm -hmm. in Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Students could they could dig themselves in a hole by just watching videos that are closer to their views or their political views or the religious views and it could really create epistemic bubbles or some biases that students could develop so there are unique moral questions that we could explore in this podcast so I think 
there are broad implications of AI being used in social media. We use our smartphones all the time. It's a very addictive product, right? Addictive softwares that are on our smartphones and on our on our laptops. And I think we need to think about the broader ethical dimensions of this when we're discussing the problem of it or, or the unique challenges and uh, benefits of AI in general. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. So it sounds like you brought up some kind of scary things, like I heard you say yes. addiction, yes. Um, attention. And so it sounds like the theme of mindfulness yes. is very connected to the user experience of digital technology. Sarah, that's something I know you've mm -hmm. thought about. Um, what is it that you think students should be thinking about in terms of mindfulness and digital tools? So I think a lot of the things that I hear from my students, I teach mostly first year students and then I have typically one class of seniors that I teach each year. And so many of their questions are the same. They either avoid social media because they feel like they can't do so mindfully or they recognize that they're using it mindlessly and they feel shame for it, but they still keep using it. And so one of the things that I want to think about is, you know, what are some ways that we can be citizens of the world but do so without feeling as though we need to avoid digital spaces because we can't control ourselves in them. We can pay attention to who we are and how we feel when we use these tools. And that can be kind of its own algorithm in terms of guiding us into things that are useful for us, things that are beneficial to us, things that, as you said, Ezra, serve our well-being, and things that don't. Cool, yeah, so it seems to me that Technology, data, algorithms, artificial intelligence have been playing a major role in people, especially young people's lives for many years. And ChatGPT has created a unique opportunity for there to be a technology that's put out in front for everyone to look at, to be amazed by. And that's really an opportunity for us to go in and say, hey, but there's also all kinds of other ways that similar technology is at work in your phone, in your social media experience, it's used for other things that we can talk about. But I, I mostly see ChatGPT as an opportunity to talk about the larger digital world that we're in. And I think here at The Digital Mind, what we're interested in is identifying, assessing, and then considering trade-offs, costs, and benefits to various ways that technology alters the way we live. So um, I should say just a little bit about ChatGPT, what it is. ChatGPT is what's called a large language model. So the way almost all AI research runs today is something called machine learning. And ChatGPT is a machine learning program that is a text predictor. And so it may look as though it's writing or thinking, but what's really happening under the covers is that ChatGPT has been trained on a whole lot of text on the internet, and it's been trained with the help of humans to predict based on a sentence or a question what sentences should come after. And we can talk a little more about that, but you can use it to write just about anything. Um, I have friends who are programmers who use it to write code. Uh, you can use it to write news stories. You can use it to write scripts. You could use it to write essays. If, if you guys want to talk about something specifically, do you want to just jump into ChatGPT? I can ask you. Sure, yeah, we can definitely do bounce that. Bounce back and forth? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so specifically, uh, we can talk about ChatGPT, and I'm happy later on to talk a little bit about how it works and the extent to which it represents real artificial intelligence. But I think probably a lot of the faculty and students are going to be interested in the practical issues. Mm -hmm. um, so, Sarah, I'll start with you. Sure. Um, I, I teach ethics. Uh, I teach philosophy. I assign papers. Mm -hmm. um, in the old days, you would just write a couple sentences, you, you'd have a prompt for your essay, and three weeks later, the student writes it the night before and turns it in. Yep. What stops a student from just taking the prompt that I give them and churning out a ChatGPT essay? Well, that largely depends on the individual in the situation that you've described. The only thing stopping them is them in that situation. But there are things that we can do to continue assigning essays in the way that we always have assigned them that will help students think more about process rather than product. This is a large conversation in composition and first year writing studies that we tend to focus on a final product. 
And for most classes that are not first year writing classes, process is rarely built in. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we can do as faculty is think about ways that we can build in the steps to writing a paper that would prevent a student from using ChatGPT to create a final product because they would be they would have to turn something in or they would be assessed at each stage. Mm. Also, the benefit of that is that we're actually teaching writing versus just assigning writing. Those are two mm. completely different things. So if we're teaching writing skills, we need to be thinking about a an overall process of writing. I think in high school, a lot of students are assigned things quickly and they have to turn them in quickly just by the nature of how the high school class mm. is constructed. So they get very used to focusing on product. The thing that we do in first year writing is try to pull back from that, say, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. The context of high school made that the way papers were written. But now we really need you to think about all the different stages, all of the ways in which creativity functions in papers, all of the ways in which organization has to accompany that creativity. And when we do that, in large part, we prevent the use of ChatGPT as an end in and of itself because there are so many stages at which they will be assessed, at which they will be given feedback, so they don't feel quite as isolated in the writing process as many students do, which is what might lead them to rely on AI rather than themselves. So that's something that I think we can do in terms of navigating around ChatGPT. But again, I think as professors, it's also on us to say ChatGPT exists, and other tools like it are being developed and will continue to be developed. We're going to live in a world where this exists, so rather than feeling like you have to use it or not use it, what are the ways in which this can foster creativity? What are the ways in which this can get ideas off the ground if you're struggling to figure out how to put two ideas together or if you're struggling to write an outline? How can ChatGPT be that first round of feedback for you so that you can then use your own brain, use your own skills, your own experience, your own knowledge, and start to build off of something rather than use it as an end because we have some responsibility as instructors to make sure that we're focusing on process rather than product but we also have a responsibility to teach students ways in which chat gpt or other relevant technologies are not inherently bad but there are ways to use them in moral or virtuous or ethical ways and there are ways that they cannot be used that way and laying all of that on the table for them gives them a framework i think but sir if i'm hearing you right Sounds like the real problem is actually in the way we've been assigning essays in the past, not the new technology. At the risk of getting myself in trouble with any faculty member who listens to this, yes, I do think that that's part of the problem. Yeah, so thank you for listening to our initial conversation in the pilot episode of The Digital Mind. We look forward to you guys listening to us again July 3rd when the new season comes out. This upcoming season, we'll be focusing on ChatGPT and social media. We will have guests on our podcast and also... That's it. We're going to have actual guests. We, we, will have, <laughs> we will have actual guests on our podcast and we will also be discussing issues related to social media and chat GPT. For more information, you could find our uh, website at ethics.web.baylor.edu and you will be able to see our podcast and more further information there. Since this is a podcast all about technology, remember that we are real people. And if you would like to see our faces as we have these conversations, all of our bloopers, you can go over to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see our podcast there if you'd rather not listen to it as a podcast. Maybe we don't need that last part, but whatever. <laughs>